Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm Adrian Kuhn from Switzerland, from University of Bern, and I will talk to you about the meta modeling framework called Bay. Uh, for those that like to play around with small deck code during talks, you can download it. I don't know. I know you, right? Uh, yeah, now you should get the URL. Right? So here you have the URL. There you get the link on a, on a sweet source repository where you can download it. So you can also maybe during the demo just follow what I do. And now, yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Shame is a framework that grew out of Moose. So actually, Moose has a kernel that is quite meta model driven. And then we have taken that kernel and uh, made a framework out of it. And it's for meta modeling at runtime. So, yeah. <coughs> and uh, I will now have some running examples through that talk which is about uh, uh, how to build an internal beer store. So, uh, what do I mean with internal? Internal means an, an internal application or an internal system is a system that we don't have to shut down uh, to update it. I mean, for us small talkers, I don't have to evangelize that now we know it's an image, we can just hot, do hot swapping and update it at runtime. So, the thing here, the, the thing meta modeling framework is especially designed for uh, for updating your meta model at runtime. So what does that mean, updating your meta model at runtime? So it, the idea is that it's, uh, that your application should grow with your business without any need to restart it or recompile it. At the moment, you might just sell beer. You might be a small store that just sells beer, but maybe one day. Uh, we will sell speakers or uh, cars, sport cars. I mean, as you get successful, or uh, also cameras. And uh, each time we add a new product to our uh, portfolio, we don't want to uh, have to restart the entire web service. I mean, it's like the internet; it's also an internal application. No one shuts down the internet to update the IP protocol. Except on the first cycle. Huh? Except on the first cycle. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will start the talk with a little introduction in what modeling, meta modeling, and meta meta modeling actually means, and uh, where the data is spending somewhere. We only talk about models, so, and usually we are used to think of data as programmers, so why is everything called a model? I mean, that's our business object when we sell beer. I mean, that's the business object, not the object in the object space memory. That's the business object, that's what we sell. So, we will just, and it's an instance, so this beer bottle here is an instance of an abstract representation. So, we have a concrete object, and here we have an abstract representation. So, it's an icon, there's a name, an alcohol volume, a price, a size. So, this here is a model, and that here is a concrete object. And um, as we might possibly want to sell more than one beer, we can say uh, this beer here is actually also an instance of the even more abstract class beer. And we see yes, the same way as a Heineken as a name with concrete value, the abstract class beer has properties, defines the <coughs> properties for its instances so we can have different beer. But as we know, our goal is to sell sport cars in the end, and uh, cameras, <laughs> speakers. So we must be even more abstract. We might not only want to sell beer, but also sport cars. And sport cars obviously have different properties. <coughs> so um, the beer is then an instance of the of abstract class. And that right here, same class, because that's a confusing thing when you do meta modeling. The meta modeling people have chosen to call their classes also classes. And we are used to think of and also smaller classes. So we always distinguish them by calling it faint class and small talk or host class. Because 
same is implemented in, in at the moment, I think, in five languages. So you can also exchange uh, new models with implementations in other languages. <coughs> And that's actually the structure. We have concrete business objects, and then maybe let's blend away the properties that are so important. We have a concrete business object, which we model with an abstract representation. And this abstract representation is also then an instance of the class P, and then an instance of the class class, that is itself an instance of itself. Right. Familiar to us, <coughs> and that's then the names that we use for these layers. Concrete objects are modeled by our model of our application, and that application, that model conforms to a meta model of our application, and the meta model itself conforms to a meta meta model. It's these three layers. This is what we call a tower of models. And that's actually what then is at the core of an animal driven application. You just interrupt me with questions if you have questions. So, uh, <coughs> after this little bit of theory, I will dive into how, uh, what's the architecture of a typical uh, application that uses the same library. And uh, then later on, I will give a demo. In, uh, So uh, the typical fame architecture has, um, of course, uh, a part that is uh, that uses fame and a part then of our application. And, uh, you see again in the, in the center of it is the tower of models. So we have the meta meta model in fame that is hardwired. So you always have the same meta meta model, and then your application can define its own model and meta model. So I will give examples of for a little beer shop what that uh, model might look like. So a model for a beer shop might well obviously include <coughs> with its properties. It will include orders. So these are concrete instances. We have here a beer. It's not the bill class beer because it's the model. We are at the model layer where we have concrete instances. And then we have orders. Here we have two orders. And they're all here by a customer. Show example that ordered these orders, and uh, and then we see we can uh, exchange these models using a special file format with other applications. I call them backend here, but it can also just be another application, and uh, that will then look like this. So that's the file format that we're using. We don't use uh, XML, uh, but this here. And uh, if you can, you will note that you just need to add a, 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 what's it called, a hash a character in front of it, and then it becomes uh, small but literal. That's also just to make it simpler uh, writing small scripts that work with these data, so you don't have to write a parse. It's actually DSL for exchanging uh, data. So we just use this kind of other literal. In the beginning, actually, we used just then the small but parser, but now we have a dedicated parser to make sure that no one can inject there some executable code. <coughs> and uh, let's go back. So if this is our model, then there is an according meta model to it, <coughs> which we see here. So we have a beer class, an order class, and a customer class. And that's all fame classes, so it's not smallpox classes. I will later on talk about the causal connection between smallpox classes and fame classes. Because of course we will map the fame classes to smallpox classes in some way. And again, and that's a nice property of the entire system, we can serialize the whole thing using the same file format. And so there's nothing special about being at the meta model layer. We can just do the same thing as with the model. So in the same way as we can, for example, you can imagine that we would uh, send this small file here uh, from one application to the other just to process the order. Like maybe invoke the service with this order so that it actually gets, uh, gets done and delivered to be delivered to the customer. But sometimes maybe 
we have an application where uh, when the meta model changes, when we have the first sport car, then we don't have to uh, uh, update the applications. We can just in the same way also send around meta models so that the applications can <coughs> communicate about their meta models that they use. And I will later show how we use code generation to on the fly then generate code that models these meta models. It's just the same format here. So, and at the top of everything, I mean, this meta model here is another meta model, which is the meta meta model, that looks like this. So, that is the, at the top of our application. Let's see the, the fixed point here at the, at the top of this tower of models that also conforms to itself. And it's actually. I couldn't help but notice that the upper concept of the theory is increasing in the slide. Is that a, a side effect of the framework? Or? That's maybe because I was actually drinking beer while doing the slide. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at here. Okay. <coughs> A. B. The man. Okay, the meta meta model is, is quite simple. We have packages, we have classes and properties. And uh, actually, the packages we already more advanced this week. And uh, otherwise, just the, the, the usual stuff that you would expect classes can inherit from others, properties of types, uh, they can be multi valued, multi valued. Uh, have opposites. I will explain that in detail later in detail, and you will see what opposites mean. We have package extensions, so uh, you can extend other people's meta models in the way that we know it as smart. <coughs> so now the next thing I will talk about is how these fan classes are partially connected to the small dot classes. And here we come up with this uh, impressive diagram. That shows how everything is connected to each other in the running system. So, uh, at the core of everything are your, your instances. So, you just have some instances of your business object that you might want to share with the front or back end. So, that it is will be the instances for your peers, orders, and customers. And of course, they are instances of any host classes. I write here that is any small talk classes. And these Small talk classes are connected to FM3 instances. So, I mean, a small talk class is also just an instance of the class, and in the same way, all fame classes are just instances of FM3 class. <coughs> Maybe that is more uh, visible here, so it, that we can just annotate in the same way that you have seen it, in a similar way have you have seen it before. We annotate our small talk class and say, okay, this small talk class should correspond to this same class and we add the annotations. I will show that later in the demo. And then it uses program processing to make the system aware of its structure, which can then let it be used to uh, generate a front or back end for it. And um, actually we can navigate here in all directions. So now we have a case where we have existing model classes and you want to get fame classes for it. And sometimes someone else maybe sends you a meta model, that is, you get, you get info information about the meta model, but you don't have any smaller classes yet. Then we can load, for example, an MSE file, we get FN3 instances, and then we can create a refactoring. I mean, code generation and small talk should just be called refactoring, because that's what we actually do at runtime. We just apply refactoring that will create our host classes. So that later you can then import the actual model of the data. This is not behavior preserving, so I would not call it refactoring. That's true, yeah, it's a change. It's actually a change set. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This is a nice term, refactor. <laughs> Switch a couple of letters here. Factor. Factor is not refactor. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, of course at the top, the entire system is, is bootstrapped by 
having the implementation of FM3 being self-described so that you can bootstrap everything. That's actually the only this top part is what you what you have hard part in your system. And everything else you can load in with a from MFE files. And we've implemented this very small kernel, we implemented that in small talk, so in visual works and squeak, in Java, <coughs> Python, and we're also working on implementations in Ruby and C sharp. So if you have a frame-based application somewhere, you can start exchanging your data with people having frame-based applications in these other languages. We have done that with Moose because we had other researchers that were collaborating with us that insisted on using Java. So uh, we made an implementation of frame initially for that reason. Yeah, I guess it's time for a demo. You heard a lot of meta, 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 meta modeling. So we'll try to make a demo. What screen resolution? At least it's not as large, right? So what I've done here in this image is that I've loaded. <coughs> I've here loaded the latest version of Fame that is uh, available at the click that it gave initially. <coughs> and um, you create your own tower. So FM is the prefix for all fame classes. So we create a new tower. And then we have a complete tower. And we can let's call it explore, right? We can explore a tower. And you see that tower consists of a model, of a meta model and of a meta meta model. <coughs> the model is empty. The meta model is also empty. You see what, what the distinction between a meta model and the model is that the meta model has some more uh, caches. So, uh, because a lot of us it's just the same at all three levels. And then you see the meta meta model is initialized with all this. With the complete FM3 meta, meta model. So, we have the FM3 property with all the properties that are in the class package. And now we can, what we can do now is, we now we have a tower, and only the topmost layer is filled, and the other two layers are empty. So the first thing that we will do is import a meta model, that is the description of beer, customer, and orders, and then generate classes for that, and then set up a new tower that works on these classes, and import a model that is a concrete beer, a Heineken, two orders, and our customer show example. Why a new tower? Yeah. Um, the first tower we will use for code generation. So uh, that is because of the causal connection of uh, fame and small talk classes. In the first tower, we have no small talk classes initially that represent our fame classes. So we just import them, and they are not causally connected to any small talk classes. And we when we generate the classes with the refactoring, we've just found it simpler at the moment. You just then fire up a new tower. Of course, you could update the existing yeah, tower. Yeah, yeah, it's just not yet gone yet, but uh, I think in visual work it does that. You can, the speed implementation is a bit flat for me because it's only partially ported, and it was, most parts of it were not ported by me, so then somehow it's, it's even for me a bit unexpected how it works. But, uh, even on the, on the train here, I fixed a lot of bugs, so now it works much better. So okay, let's do that. I've prepared that code here. Everything that is so everything that has to do with fame is here. At the core is the also the implementation of the FM3 elements. And um, I have here my examples. So 
so here, here we have the serialized text <coughs> of the uh, Heineken meta model that defines, for example, here a class peer with all its properties and a customer and an order. And we use that here in this code to import it. So if you do here, we, uh, we get first the string with the MSE stream, and then we create the power. I'm not doing something dangerous. <coughs> change my example on the fly because actually you should just be able to say import string method, right? Exactly. So we create power, we import the string to the meta model, and then we fire up a new code generator and tell this code generator to visit that meta model. So the code generator is just a visit from the meta model, it walks over every, all information there, and in the end we can preview the refactoring and apply it if you like it or not. So let's do that. Okay, works fast. Here we have a refactoring that it defines a class, a Heineken beer, and uh, <coughs> that's uh, actually a bug in this preview thingy because we have in there pragmas and they're not visible here. I guess that's a problem with this uh, string replacement thing that also uses brackets for its replacement. Uh, I mean, here it works. Here we see the, and, and then the generate code is also there anyway. I don't know what to talk about all the um, Just generates everything and it also has these pragmas. So that's actually the pragma that you have to add to tell to some getter that it is getter to a property. Because of course you generate the classes, you can later on also add your own getters that are not part of the meta model. They're just there for convenience. Uh, and it generates also a customer. And actually, this mother browser is more better than to browse this code, so we accept it. Generates with code. And if I fire up the new browser, I should be able to see it. So, okay. <coughs> okay, it was generated here, and now we can also see. As you cannot put an annotation on a class in Smalltalk, we put the annotation of the class in a class side method. I think that's a typical idea. So you see here we tell that this class that it's an MSE class named Peer that inherits from object and should be in the package Heineken. And uh, the instance side, we annotate the getters. So if you annotate the getter, it can find out by itself, and can find out by itself the setter. So all these classes have been generated and annotated, and now we... Just a short question here. Um, we have the type number in there. So yeah. actually you have type attributes there? It's all typed, yes. Okay, yes. So can I put a string into price or will they, um, the system then later on check? As you can see, the code that I generated now will not check that. I mean, there is no check here. Well, but we could use another, another code generator that generates that. Uh, actually, I'm working even on something where you extend the, the signature of the method. But yeah, you could just generate code. I mean, you can. But what would happen if I would put in a string into a, well, create an extent and put in a string for the price? At the moment where you put it in, nothing happens. But then you can you can have a method on the model. I mean, that will be in the model then, and then you can check the model for conformance to its meta model. And at that moment, it will tell you that <coughs> that the value there does not conform to the meta model because it has the wrong path. Or better, because it has the wrong description. I mean, it does not look at the smaller type, it looks at the faint description. Uh, yeah, that's here in speech we at the moment have just one code generator that generates code as smooth like it. So you could, of course, change the code generation. Um, okay. Yeah, next we will generate fire up a new tower, load in the classes, and then import a model. Uh, what it does to generate the code, oh yeah, that's maybe interesting. Um, we have seen the customer and the order, they have opposite properties. So uh, the customer knows all its orders and the orders know their customer. So that's an opposite. And uh, that's implemented here with a slot. So we have on each side a slot, and when you update one side, then the other is automatically updated. And uh, yeah, so 
when we set the orders, we set it on the slot, and to get it, we get the value of the slot. And in the initialized method, we have here a uh, in many slot. So these slots have been implemented by Tom for Vast, and they just update each other in every fancy way. Is it you? And uh, We will see that later in the, in the example, I will show that how this works. <laughs> so yeah, it would really be nice to have a uh, small that is standard with, with real slots. That, uh, so that you can also model associations. Again, the mechanic an example, or, oh, I can still open here, right? And then we have here a model. Here we have a model, so we have a concrete here with a concrete name and the alcohol volume. Is it now more? Johnny, is it five? <coughs> Shall I make it eight? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, why not? Eight means it's not. It's like a Belgian beer, then, right? No. <laughs> but maybe a larger model, right? I mean, a good person. Uh, I like <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no currency. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, fame has been designed, or the meta, meta model of fame has been designed to be small, so we have just numbers and no uh, numbers with units. And also, at the moment, we have no date, so date is just stored as a string. But in uh, the. This is a So, huh? so if we want to add new types, do we need to uh, break open the meta meta model? Yeah, that's, for new types, you would have to, at the moment, you cannot add new primitive types. But you can, of course, add at the meta model level just the type that has a, a unit. And then instead of saying this is a number, you would then say this it's a currency. Like as you're used to do it from object oriented model. But to add primitives <coughs> at the moment, not possible. But I'm thinking about the way of annotating things that you can add annotations somehow to extend the meta meta model without breaking it up. But that's at the moment future work, so it's not really really stable. I had such an extension of primitive types in the previous version of FAME, but it turned out that the solution I've chosen there was too complicated, so I'm working there. FAME is also about being simple. Thank you. So here we create a new tower, and I'm faking a bit here as if there would be namespaces in Squeak, so I'm just searching for all classes, starting with these letters and having then another uppercase letter. Just more convenient than giving it a collection of classes. And uh, yeah, for example, what we don't need to export the string. And then I import a model down there and it gives back the tower, so we will go and explore it now. So now we have set up a new tower and linked, partially linked the meta model to this model classes that we previously generated and imported some model. So again, we have these three layers. Here is still FM3 classes. Here we have now also FM3 instances, but the, the model, the Heineken meta model. And now here we have instances of these classes that we generated before. So we have the customer, the order, the beer, and another order. And if you go to the customer, we see it has in its slot. Yeah, it refers to the two other slots, so it refers to both orders. Whereas when you take a look at the model that we actually imported, down here at the customer, we didn't add any orders. So if there's something as an opposite, even in the serialized format, you only have to store it in one end, and you can leave away the other. Because when you set one end, the other is actually updated. <coughs> yeah. So, but when I change my smooth code, the model is updated? Uh, yeah, I know. At the moment, here in Speak, it is not. For VisualWorks, I had a version that has done that. I mean, of course, when you, when you change the meta model, and, and then you can fire it up that it regenerates or updates the code with another refactoring. It does not that on the spot, but you could also do it on the spot. But the other way around it is partially. And I'm aware of that, that it's not fully done. And, uh, yeah, what else can I show? How many minutes are left? Is it or 
you handwrite your classes, yeah. then you have to annotate them with the annotation okay. to, to get a meta model. Okay, then I have all the properties into the the pragma. Yeah, you have to set the pragma, one pragma on the class side, and for each property that you want the pragma. Okay. But uh, typically, often what I do is I just write the classes, yeah, that way, okay. with the pragmas, and fire it up, get out the meta model, throw away the class, and regenerate them. Okay. Because it's quite painstaking to write code that has all these slots and all the fancy maybe type checks. In there, so I just write the skeleton, scan it, and then regenerate it with all the features. Or you can just, I mean, here in this case, I've just written, because I'm fluid with that, I've just written that text part. But for larger things, it's a bit fancy. Do you have any, uh, any features to import other uh, modeling languages like XML schema or so? Two students of staff have written uh, an import for the EMF model in VisualWorks, but I do not know what the state is of that, and that's a long time ago we were lost and we were tests. EMF is uh, the, the Eclipse modeling framework. It's the industry standard they use that. Yeah. It's bloated. I mean, they have, I think they have 20 or 30 classes that they made a meta model. Whereas we have only four. I mean, so long as I have that money. So I engage more Yeah. <laughs> there was another question. I want to ask how they do compare the paper and the EMF. Actually, in the news two or three years ago, we decided to use EMF or EMOF. And I've implemented the complete implementation of EMOF. And in the end, we just, it just, uh, we just had to, uh, Maintain code that we did not use. So we, uh, we made a meta model of, of EMOF, EMF, it has about 30 classes, for example. Yeah, a good example is um, uh, multi value properties here. Here I, you can just say a property has one value or multiple values. Whereas in EMF, you can say how many values it has. And in order to be able to then have such with unlimited values, they have to introduce an additional primitive type which is called unlimited. Because the typical numbers of uh, in computers, they have limit, so they have this unlimited type. And the only implementation of the unlimited type, uh, we have always had bugs there and had to maintain that, and it was actually not being used. So I started swiping away everything that we did not use in the MF. And that's how our fame was born in that country. Okay. So here you will find in the slides, uh, I'm going to go over that, a quick overview of the core classes that you find in all implementations, in all languages. You have the power, the repositories, and here we have the classes for the streaming, so the streaming, the models, and the levels, and here we have the complete core, actually we have not much more than that. Okay, uh, to repeat, the thing is, uh, is useful to uh, exchange any data with other applications, with any files. And not only data, but also the model of your data. And you can give in the appropriate framework, I mean, something like Magrit, or as they do it with Moose, you can also automatically generate the UI that works with that. Of course, we have all the meta descriptions, all the meta information, so we can just generate UIs. We can even generate UIs for data that we did not anticipate, because the UI is based on the meta model, and we can import the meta model. And yeah, you can extend your application at runtime. How do you want? Do you extend your application at runtime? Do you do it with your register? Yes, some tweaks or change? Well, for that, uh, that depends a bit on the implementation. In, uh, in Smalltalk, we have, we have it uh, connected to Smalltalk option, and then it's just the same mechanism. So you would have to write a custom integration script or something if re value changes, and if they are just uh, added, then they're just initialized. But of course, if, 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 the, if you have to do this integration where the meaning of the stored values change, then you have to see for yourself that you're updating. And is there a trigger if you import some, some new or an updated meta uh, model uh, that the, the instances get, uh, uh, get a trigger to, to migrate the schema? Yeah, that would be about versioning, and we don't do that yet. But of course, it would be very nice to have. So all the new stuff will be new. 
will be named yet uh, initially. I mean, I did not have yet a client of paying that deliberately needed that, so did not implement it. But also, if someone starts using fame, then has some new requirements, you can always sit together and see. Uh, <coughs> yeah, more questions? Yeah. If you change one of the meta models, you regenerate the underlying uh, system. So, would it make sense to you to just interpret the mo uh, models at runtime? Ah. Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs>